hi guys and welcome back to my channel so it has been a while as you can maybe tell i am in a different background different surrounding we have moved house so this is my first video being filmed in this new apartment which is very exciting but i will share more about that in another video today i want to share with you a bit of a roundup from my second trimester so let's get into the video the second trimester is an interesting one because it's when you start feeling a bit more like yourself again, your energy starts slowly coming back and then one day you just wake up, get out of bed, don't feel as sick <laughs> and you realise in the evening you actually have a little bit of head space and a little bit of energy left to actually do things which is fantastic. So. I made full use of the second trimester and in these wonderful socially distanced COVID times we like many other people took a little bit of a look a long hard look at our life at our lifestyle at our home life and we decided to move house which is a big undertaking <laughs> and in the current climate is quite a challenge because Properties were moving fast, they're all going for over the asking price. Anything with a bit of a garden or a larger balcony was definitely sought after. I was ready for the challenge. I'm determined and when I get an idea in my head, I go for it and especially when I have a deadline like a new child on the way. So we've achieved it, we are in our new home and I am now in the third trimester and waiting for nesting to kick in. So the second trimester, we definitely made use of of that ability to make decisions <laughs> because my brain was semi working again I still felt very foggy where you can't necessarily you just don't feel like yourself you can't really string words together and you can't really come up with with much depth to you it, it's really hard to explain but baby brain is is definitely a thing and it's not just sleep deprivation because that's only really kicking in or starting to kick in now. We made full use and we are in our new home and I'm very, very happy. So we, at the time, were living in a two bedroom apartment. They call it a three room apartment here in Iceland. To keep a long story short, it was an apartment that's been in, the, in Ingmar's family for around 20 years. His mum bought it when she moved from Blundas to Reykjavik and pretty much everyone in the family has at one stage lived there so it was a big step for him and for a lot of people in the family and also for us it is the first place the only place that we have lived together it's the first home that mia has ever had and it's it's where we brought her home from the hospital so it, it was a very special place to me but at the same time it never really felt like my home because it was Ingemar's mum's home first and then when she passed away Ingemar bought his siblings out of it and so he took it on so we were very fortunate that we weren't renting we actually owned the property and it meant that we were on the ladder and we could kind of make that transition up to the next run of the ladder a little bit easier. We made the decision to move because of a number of different things obviously a growing family we wanted a bit more space but also it was on a kind of mezzanine level third fourth level of the apartment block so it was a lot of stairs and when you're pregnant that's kind of tough but pregnant trying to wrangle a toddler up and down those stairs with shopping or whatever else and the thought of having to do that with a newborn in a car seat or a baby carrier or whatever I just nope <laughs> so I got to the challenge pretty quickly and we were basically looking for somewhere that had a bit more space a bit bigger of a balcony a bathtub and a lot less stairs which we have achieved so I'm very excited and I really can't wait to share a home tour with you and show you what we're going to be doing to this place because it is a bit of a blank canvas which is my dream and means that it will feel so much more like our home 
and that we can bring our next child home to and create a nice family life here. So that's kind of been what I've been up to in the last couple of weeks and months. I have also had Mia off on summer holiday, which here in Iceland, the nursery, leg school, kindergarten age have four weeks off. So I was home with her whilst packing up our life to move house um, and get everything sorted on the sale of our place as well and get everything cleared to move to here. So I was juggling a lot. <laughs> Very glad to have a bit of energy back. But yes, it was nice to spend that time with her and I just, I made the decision to take a bit of a step back from YouTube, from editing and sharing. I have filmed a lot. Um, and so I have a lot of editing ahead of me, but I just decided I needed that time as a family, as a wife, but as a mum, and just enjoy being a mum to just one for now and have that special mummy Mia time. And so we had a really, really lovely summer where we did have a little bit of sunshine, <laughs> but we did have some lovely days out Lots of swimming, lots of going for coffee and croissants and treats with mummy and a bit of shopping and playing in her new park and coming to her new house and getting her ready for that move as well, which she is, she's done so well moving here. She's very happy. She has the biggest room in the house. <laughs> All her toys are here. They were in storage for a good few weeks, so it kind of felt like Christmas again when she moved here. She's back at leg schooly now, so it's good to just have that time and space to get back to me, get back to filming and editing and sharing what we've been up to with you. So as I did with the last video, I've kept weekly kind of bullet point notes on my phone. So I'm just gonna go through them now and share some points that I've maybe forgotten about. So the first thing I've said is that it's nice to have told everyone. It's so nice to share this news and have it out and about so you can actually talk about it um, and start sharing things on Instagram and on YouTube. Week 13, I've written feeling less sick, feeling more like myself, which is, it did happen quite quickly into the second trimester, which I know doesn't happen for everyone, but it took until about week 16 to really feel the energy coming back. So I was grateful to not feel as sick anymore. The only thing I've really had a craving for is, which is something I would never choose to eat anyway, but the sour Haribo sweets. And I have managed so far to stay away from them. Just a sour taste in my mouth. That's kind of, that's the only craving I really have at the moment. Um, so maybe some more interesting cravings will happen along the way. I stopped taking my prenatal vitamins and just take uh, vitamin D right now because in Iceland we don't have a huge amount of actual sunshine and natural vitamin D. We do have a lot of daylight coming in, um, but it is starting to feel a bit more autumnal as the days and the nights roll in. So yes, taking vitamin D is very important. Feeling like I want to get back to work. So this was where we started looking at properties and I honestly think I viewed everything that was available in the whole of Reykjavik in our budget within maybe two months. I really just got on it. I didn't really do a huge amount of work work, but that was enough work whilst looking after Mia and summer holidays and all that kind of thing so it was a lot to juggle yeah week 15 that's where we started to really talk about moving and taking it seriously and talking about what we want from our new property our new home and what we were kind of willing to negotiate over I've also written sore hips and sciatica now this is when I started taking on my personal challenge of a daily walk now if you follow me on Instagram you will see that this is something that I really did try and stick to and was pretty good for, I'm gonna say two months. <laughs> it might have been more like six weeks, but there were a few days where I didn't go out or I didn't go out in the evening. I'd kind of walked in, in the daytime with Mia, but I tried to spend half an hour to 45 minutes on a walk just completely on my own. Ingemar would take over the bedtime routine and look after Mia and I could just go out and have my own time put some music on, put a podcast on, or just 
go around to the streets and just look at houses and nosy at people's gardens and look at the plants in their gardens and all that kind of thing. Just get out of the house, look at something different, a little bit of exercise, not really exercise, just walking around the neighbourhood, moving my body and it definitely helped with sciatica, with hips, with just the kind of lower back and when you feel like your your bump is growing and your muscles are all starting to really stretch and pull and tighten, especially at the top of your stomach, um, it can be, it can feel like an easier option not to move, but moving your body definitely helps and is beneficial. Week 16, viewing lots of apartments. So I started really getting on to viewing and taking, I took my sister-in-law with me, so big thank you to Ella for coming along and kind of just keeping an eye on Mia so that I could look at things, ask questions, but also just having that local insight and knowing the process as well and knowing and understanding the fee structure and everything that goes into it. It was really, really good to have her with me. So we did a lot of viewing apartments, which was fun at the start, but got very tedious over time. Um, until you know you just you walk into the place that you're going to put your offer in on and you just know it's home and you know it's the one and that's how I felt straight away when we walked in here and I'm so glad that I got that that feeling and it didn't take us too long but we did look at a lot of properties in that time sore stomach muscles um, yeah, it just, when your stomach muscles are separating and stretching, it really does get quite uncomfortable. It's not painful, but, um, just kind of going for swims, going for gentle walks, gentle exercise, and a little bit of stretching as well can help. Indigestion started, it has not been nearly as bad as with Mia, so <laughs> that, that I am very grateful about. I put week 18 started shopping for baby, so we have... A shop here in Reykjavik called Barnalopin and it's where you can buy pre-loved second-hand clothes and toys and anything that you need for parenthood. <laughs> I started buying very neutral colours and then week 20 we had our scan, we found out it was a boy and I started shopping a little bit more for kind of more boy appropriate outfits but not necessarily um, kind of blue and whatever. Week 19, I skipped ahead a bit there, week 19 was where we felt, well I was feeling flutters already but we felt baby kicks and Ingmar also felt the baby kicks so that was really nice that we got to share in that and that he already felt baby kick because he's quite impatient <laughs> and if I put his hand on bump he sometimes just kind of, no I don't feel anything and he's off. So it was quite nice that he reacted very quickly to daddy. And I've also written that Ingemar started giving me gentle back massages. Now, this is something that I think I read in my Pregnancy Plus app that partners can do. And it was kind of like a butterfly motion like this, just really softly on my back from my hips up to kind of mid back and that really it just felt very soothing he hasn't really done it that much since <laughs> um we've moved on to much more serious things with leg cramps now and they're definitely not gentle massages anymore so I, I might get back to asking him about that because it was just really nice to kind of feel just feel a, a bit of a gentle rub so if you're feeling that, get your partner to give your back a rub. Then I skip to week 23 where we, I mean, we worked very quickly here. When I'm on a mission, we put in an offer on a new home. Now, we did put in an offer on a place literally down the road from where we were living, which I'm now in hindsight very glad that we didn't get because there's a lot of construction going on around that area. So that would have been very annoying. We kind of discussed an offer with this place right away. We told the agent what our budget was and the seller said no to it straight away so it wasn't like an official offer. The offer that they had accepted fell through and so we put in our offer again and they accepted it the second time. So it was kind of third time lucky for us. Week 24 
amazingly my mum managed to fly over and come to visit us in between Covid rules changing and different tests changing and she had to quarantine for I think it was six hours waiting for her result when she arrived and then did a test 72 hours before when she left but rules are changing every week but it was so lovely to have her here and it was so special for Mia to have Gran and just for them to see each other because Mia has changed so much in the time that Gran had last seen her. I think it was maybe 10, 11 months, which really isn't so bad. I know that there are a lot of people who haven't seen family a lot longer. I haven't seen my brother and sister and their kids for almost two years now, which is the longest I've ever not seen them, no matter where I've lived in the world. And this is one of the closer places that I've lived to them in the world. It is what it is and we all just have to learn to live with it and be as safe as we can. So we enjoyed every minute of her being over here. We went for walks, we played in the play park, we went for lots of swims outdoor. We went to the new pool here in Reykjavik, the Sky Lagoon, that was absolutely amazing. And we also did a hike at six months pregnant the hike to the lava field of the volcano. So I will have a video on that soon. Gran Rosa always brings good luck. We, on the following week, week 25, we sold our apartment. So we got an offer on our apartment, we accepted and everything went nice and smoothly, which is fantastic. And this was also the first week where I had a midwife checkup where we didn't wear masks. And it's the only midwife checkup that I've had where we've not worn masks. We're back into mandatory masks again now. Ingmar has been able to attend one meeting with the midwife, which is good because it's nice that <laughs> she knows he exists, um, but it was nice to have him there as well, just to kind of ask questions and support in everything. Week 26, summer holidays. Okay, <laughs> I think that, yeah, this is where Mia went on summer holidays. So maybe before it was kind of just, there was a lot of staff days and um, new rules, new restrictions and distancing. So they needed a day to sort things out and get everything in place. So there's there's been a lot of days where we've not been in a lockdown or anything, but there's not been school on. This has been kind of a difficult summer considering I don't have anyone else who can look after Mia. So if she's at home, I'm not working, basically. <laughs> week 26, she went on summer holidays for four weeks and we just had such a good time together. It's been so nice to get to spend that mummy and Mia time. I feel so lucky. It's something that was so important to me to enjoy that time before baby comes along, but also just for me to have a little girl and get to hang out with her and go shopping and go for coffee and all the typical things that you would imagine I'm gonna do with her, we did it and we did painting and drawing and it's just been so nice, lots of crafts. I've also <laughs> said that this is when indigestion kicked up a little bit more, probably because I was lifting her, running around after, not running, but um, running around after her, bending, just doing a lot more. So I was feeling the effects of that. I also got hemorrhoids. <laughs> so they've started um, and we started packing. So that was kind of the biggest challenge for the summer was just packing everything up and getting it ready to move here without lifting anything. And it's been really frustrating. This blue unit, <laughs> I want to move into the bedroom and I can't obviously, cause it's way too heavy for me to be lifting right now. And it's really frustrating, <laughs> like these big frames here. But anyway, I just have to not do it and <laughs> look after baby and bump. Week 27, 28, finish packing and get ready to move house. And that's basically the whole trimester gone. <laughs> it flew by week 29, we moved house and that's me in the, the final trimester right now. And 
I'm really glad that it was a good trimester. I felt fine throughout it. I was able to get everything done that we wanted to get done other than work-wise, but I had I made that choice and I'm glad that I took a step back from putting pressure on myself to share videos and keep up with that so that I could actually spend time with Mia and get our family ready for moving. And it's really, it's paid off because we're here, we're happy, Mia's back at school, the boxes are here, <laughs> I'm surrounded by them all around the other side of the camera. And yeah, we're just, we're ready to get settled here and get ready for baby number two and yeah, bring on the last trimester and baby is happily kicking away in my tummy right now. I might do a, a belly shot so you can see bump right now. I think that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. As always, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment anything down below if you've got a question or whatever, and make sure to subscribe and click the bell button for notifications of new videos. And I'll see you on another one soon. Bye guys. Oh,